Hello, my name is Dmitry, and today we're going to build TypeScript full stack application with best in class web technologies that we got today. So, what we got? We're having database which is Postgres with the Prisma as ORM. We're having backend services with the Next.js, with Festify, with GraphQL over Mercurius. I use Festify and Mercurius, but you can easily replace it with Express, Apollo Server, or whatever you like. For server-side renderer, we're having Next.js with a TypeScript and Oracle as a GraphQL client. And eventually on front-end, we will have React and Oracle as a GraphQL client. Also, we will make some GraphQL code generation. And basically, we will try to not write TypeScript as much as we could. We will be able to generate some classes based on database Prisma schema. So generate classes. Based on that, we'll use those in our resolvers. We will be able to generate some GraphQL schema based on that. Based on GraphQL schema, we will generate our Oracle hooks. Our front end will consume auto generated hooks to fetch our data. And we will be able to make requests with those to our backend services. In this part, we will only implement backend and communication with database using NestJS and Prisma. Our full stack application will be managed by Annex Monorepo. So for that, we will create Annex workspace with the name of full stack and preset NestJS and with the scope API. We will discuss scopes later on. We'll select uh, NestJS as application name API. We don't need NX Cloud at the moment. And now we have our workspace with the application API with already generated backend. We can try to run it and see if it works. As we can see, our application up and running on port 333. That's fine. To add GraphQL, we should install GraphQL packages as well as Fastify package. After packages successfully installed, we can remove Express from our application. After it's done, we can add Fastify into Nest Factory. And in our app model imports, we should add GraphQL. After adding GraphQL model, we will generate user resource. Let's check it out. We have our user model. We have our resolvers. It's already typed and based on those annotations, we will be able to generate GraphQL schema. Also, we're having our playground as well as uh, GraphQL running on this port.
we have our user with example field. It's not that much, but it is at least something. Now we can add our database ORM. First of all, let's generate NX lib, the data access lib with scope API. Now we have in our data access lib with some model. We actually not need it. We just need to create Prisma schema file. We should install Prisma. We will extract our Prisma into a lib root folder. I mean Prisma schema, delete all those files. And in package.json, we will add Prisma. with the path to schema, which is that path. We should also add Postgres, I guess, under Docker to be able to connect to it. That's our Docker Compose file. So now we should create environment file to keep our database URL, which Prisma needs. Let's add some database related scripts and install env cmd to provide our local env file. env And let's run database app, which will spin up our Docker run migrations and create Prisma client and we'll watch for schema changes. I already have something in my database, so I will migrate and delete all data in my database. And Prisma says that I don't have anything in my schema it suggests some basic model. Let's update our model. And run it again. So it asks me to enter name for new migration. I'll put init in it. I still don't have Prisma client. I'll install it right away. And I will run db up one more time. To be able to generate types based on our models, we should include some package named Prisma NSGS GraphQL. Let's install it. And we also should make a library where we can store our generated types. DB types. Let's see what we got. We have generated DB types, SRC library. We will generate index file right under src folder by saying init single we will use class validator so we should install it and we will be able to generate inputs and outputs let's run db up one more time to be able to generate our types and let's see what we got we have user class Yeah, we have a bunch of it, but in the end, we have an our um, generated user class based on our schema. 
Also, I saw that we don't have class transformer, which we should include as well. And now let's extend our schema. Now our user have password that is uh, hidden, but it is covered with some validation. We have an email, which is uh, could be validated by just is email. What we have uh, inside uh, here commented like that by three slashes and says validator, which is actually class validator. But for more information, uh, I suggest you to go to the Prisma SGS GraphQL documentation to see how it, uh, how to work with that. So we have name, but we can make it max, max length. We, we can check for max length as well as min length. Um, for a passport, we should have min length as, as well as max length, I guess, 100 is enough. And min length as 8, as it's kind of default. And let's see if we have it in place. Not really. Let's run, let's stop our server actually, and let's run DB up one more time. We have already changed our user, so now we have to. It already understood that we changed something related to the database and already generate a uh, new migration. Let's uh, call it user update. user updates, and now we migrated our database as well as we got some new validators validator annotation on our uh, fields let's see how can we use it let's get back to our user resolver we don't need those dtos and entities anymore we will use auto-generated ones as well as input types so user comes from db types. Hmm. User create input. And as well, let's rename it everywhere. We should pass this user create input to our database. Let's actually inject our database. As we can see, in NASGS docs, we can use service like that, Prisma service, uh, and we will inject that in our application. Data access library, file db service. And rename it to db service. And inject in our user service. I don't need any props. Our db db service. Let's actually export our db service. And have it in place. And then user, do the one with creating user and pass user create input. Not really, it should be data user create input. Let's see if we're able to run our backend. And you see uh, in our GraphQL playground, we already have some mutations and queries. Let's create some user. Function prefix with mutation. 
create user which has a create user input with the email which let's give it test password as well test name <laughs> test and get back ID email and the name let's run it yeah we did it but it not really what we want to do because we want email to be email password at least uh, eight characters and the name at least I don't know 10 characters so how we can implement our validation based on our schema to include our validation we should add to our application validation pipe use global pipes and let's add validation pipe from NetJS and some types we added validation pipe we transforming our um, errors just for uh, tutorial sake um, you can remove it and you will not have any error descriptions but I want to have it in my playground as you see now we have our errors let's actually see how we achieve that so our request comes to our notation which is create user on create user we have user create input which already filled with our validators which is easy mail min length max length i should probably fix it as well as a password which is comes from our database schema so when you plan in your database entity you can describe it in here like that and just use it all the way up uh, to front end i mean you can reuse this user create input uh, class with validators even in front end application we will cover it later on in the next series test email.com password will be Test pass and the name three and we successfully created our user that successfully passed validation and I guess that's it for this part in the next part we'll be able to generate uh, our front end related things and run all this stuff concurrently if you like it hit the like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one github links in the description